In this episode, Matt finally gets our electronic ignition system module in his hot little hands, and we find something unbelievably interesting hidden inside the fender. What's this thing? Can Plus, you see it there? Yeah. Yeah, massaging seat. Fired up for that alone. I know. All right, so we got our ignition module back from the programmers. Um, we're hoping it works. <laughs> we also ordered a couple of keys for it, so we'll be able to uh, have two sets of keys. Uh, the only other thing they couldn't do is do the laser cut metal parts of the keys, the switch blades. So we have to do those later. But at least this year we can run the car. We can we can order the other ones from. Mercedes once we have the uh, the title in our hands but uh, yeah we're gonna see if we can wrestle this thing in here and uh, plug it in it's gonna take two hands so uh, we'll try to record this but it might a be, team effort might be a yeah be a team effort four hands four hands Ugh. if I can get in here Ooh. there maybe how many bits are getting is one there too? Getting your junk? It's, it's, it's not getting my junk. There is two. All right, after a whole bunch of wrestling and using our smallest pan positions, tweaking everything possible, we managed to get the ignition back into the dash uh, and the instrument panel back in. And we just hooked up the battery again because we had it disconnected in the back here. So we've just got the ground on there finger tight for now. And we're gonna put the key in and see if we get any kind of action on the dashboard. So I'll take you guys in there for the first look. Move selector lever to park. That's what it says? Yeah. Okay. That's more than it would say before, isn't it? Yeah, it didn't say that before. What do we have to do so, here? I think we just have to push it to head. Okay. Key. Now it's, it's a no key. Key, do not forget. Do not forget your key. Zero kilometers score. <laughs> <laughs> Just we reset it. No. Does the key actually go in there? Okay. <laughs> it's not turning. What? Do you have to hit the brake? I don't think so. Um. <laughs> Did we do something wrong? There's nothing with this thing that would keep it with there. I don't think so. Should we try the other key? Sure. Just in case. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. That could have been a might be an expensive thing. <coughs> the lock and unlock don't work on the key. They don't? No. Uh, that's kind of a bad Red sign, flag. isn't it? This one doesn't turn either. Um, shouldn't we 
like something has to work, right? I mean, if they can't even unlock it, then. That's kind of light, that blinks. Yeah. Um, your thoughts? Hey guys, we're back for another day on the CL55. Um, yesterday where we ended up is we put that new ignition module in, we tried both our keys. They don't turn, it doesn't seem to register the key in the ignition. Um, the lock and unlock functions don't work, the no. comfort stuff doesn't work. Uh, what were the other symptoms? Not, nothing on the dash really works, although we can't really turn anything on because we can't turn the key. So we looked around a little bit and we thought, well, this looks like an electrical thing. So we looked at the fusing and um, there is, we did find a blown fuse. It's a uh, fuse 78, which is, uh, uh, actually we'll take you guys over there. It's, it's in, the, um, in the passenger side fuse compartment, which is right here. And fuse 78 it controls alarm signal horn with additional battery. Steering column module, the electronic ignition system control unit, and MESFI control unit. So that does seem to line up with what we were seeing. So uh, we did replace the fuse and uh, it uh, blew immediately. So we're gonna chase down the most likely culprit from what we've been reading is that alarm siren with additional battery. I guess they have a lithium battery in them and at about this age that starts to leak, especially if the main battery's dead, which this one has been for you know, five years. So that makes sense that that could be shorted out. And it's also the easiest thing to check. We just have to take the inner fender liner out on the driver's side, we believe, and try unplugging it. And, and if that keeps the fuse from blowing, we should be able to try the ignition. And then, then we can circle back to trying to figure out what's wrong with the siren module, maybe take it apart or replace it. Um, if it's not that, then unfortunately one of the things it could be is that EIS unit which we just had programmed with the keys. So, well, we don't really suspect that because no. if the guy was able to program it, it's probably not shorted out unless he soldered something funny. But then again, we don't know if this is a pre-existing condition or not with this fuse because we didn't have keys before. So it's kind of a... Well, yeah, when we picked it up, there there's no steering wheel lock. There's no lock on the steering wheel, which we didn't think anything of at the time. And luckily there wasn't, or else we wouldn't have been able to get it on the trailer. But now it's part yeah. of that same circuit. So makes leads us to believe that it was blown when we picked it up. Yes, exactly. But, yeah, yeah, good point. So we're going to go with the easiest, most likely scenario with that alarm siren. So. We'll set up over there, we'll take the fender liner out and, and we'll see what that looks like. It should be on the driver's side at the front there, so it shouldn't take us too long. We'll go set up over there and we'll get bring you guys in when we open it up here. All right, so Matt's got all the fasteners off here. Now we just gotta see if we can break it this out of here. Is there something under there? Is there something going straight? I don't feel anything. Oh, well, maybe, but I don't know if that's part of that. Oh, our brakes are getting all dirty. There is one down here, but I don't know if that's part of the skirt or not. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, yeah? Uh, I don't know. I can't tell. Although, maybe it is. Must be. Huh. What is it? Oh yeah, it is. There's a. What is that? Does this work? Yeah. Oh, it's one of them torques ones. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, one of these guys. <laughs> Interesting. It did sound like it loosened it though. This is more over here. I don't think so. We definitely have to curl the top down, right? Oh, oh, there. 
Oh, that was easy. <laughs> What's this little dirt pocket for? for Water collector, eh? Oh, yeah. I think we got any of the security. Can you see it there? Yeah. It's in here. You need the security torques, right? Yeah. Oh, look, there's Unless a bolt take... missing. What's this thing? What is this guy? Megahertz, 315 megahertz. Oh, it's an antenna. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's take a peek. So here's what we're looking at. Uh, that's the, that seems to be the uh, wireless antenna. And then, yeah, thanks Matt. <laughs> that's the, that's the uh, siren with battery right there. I see there is a electrical connector there on the back oh, of it. Oh, we can just pop it off maybe. Yeah, I wonder if we can just disconnect it and test it. If we can. Do we need a little pick tool or something? Uh huh. Maybe. Oh. All right. So we managed to disconnect the connector from the siren unit, and we left it installed for now, just to troubleshoot this. I'm going to put a new seven and a half amp fuse in here in position seventy-eight. Okay, and Matt's going to connect the battery back up. Whoa. The windows just budged. Look at that. This might be successful. They've never done that before. No. Okay, well, let's try a key in there and see if it recognizes it. Oh, fingers crossed, this would be so nice, Matt. I've been hurt in the past. No. No? No. No difference? Nothing. It's anything different on the dash? No. No. Well, shit. Steering wheel lock. Lock and unlock. Yeah. No difference there either. Oh, so did it blow again? That's the question. It did not. It didn't blow. Well, that's progress, I would say. <laughs> well, that definitely tells me that there's something wrong with that sign unit, but why does key not work, Matt? <laughs> okay, well. I guess two steps forward, one back. We're not uh, much further ahead now than we were before. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna have to do a little more research into this. Okay, so update. Just for uh, <laughs> just for shirts and giggles, we tried our second key, and uh, like magic, it turns. We've got a dashboard and a fan and lights. Oh, we better try the massage seats. That's important. <laughs> the massage seats, yeah. Oh, look at the climate control even came alive, man. Still no lock. On. Yeah, the lock and unlock. But I wonder if that's because my door's open and the trunk's open. Well, maybe. Check this out, though. Oh, I got windows. You got windows? Oh yeah, you can, got a bit of a smell now that the... <laughs> now the AC's on? Yeah, the fans like blowing. nine year or five year old dust smell. Oh, the heated seats work. So does a cool function, Matt. That's interesting. You can have power warm, seats are moving. Warm and cool at the same time. Yeah, you can. That's odd, eh? Yeah, the seats recline function is working. The headrest adjustment works. Wow. 
Oh, the seats uh, popped down when Matt hit the button there for the headrests in the back. Wow, what about the back windows? Is there controls for those, Matt? Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. So, let's shut the climate control off so we can hear, I guess. If we can figure out how to do that. Hey, no, zero? Yeah. Okay. So, what's next, sir? Do we dare? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's that? There's still a little bit of gas in it. How much? Uh, just under a quarter tank. You know what we should do? We should put some fresh gas in with this gas, yeah, mix it and up. then we'll see if we can start this thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we've gone ahead and put a couple jerry cans in the tank, just because this gas is about five years old. Um, that should dilute it enough, I think. Interestingly enough, <clears throat> Matt and I found this uh, laminated fuse layout map for the car. And some notes, hand scribbled notes in the trunk uh, that have to do with the one of the notes. Okay, so mirror, keyless go, trunk, and the alarm, and, and where to find the fuse for the alarm system. So, my guess is the uh, previous owner was battling the same things we are at the moment, which is rather interesting. Uh, so, we've got, uh, we've got the one working key in. Uh, and I think we're actually ready to try to see if this thing will actually start up for the first time in five years. Right, Matt? Yes. Okay. Do you want to do the honor, sir? Oh. Hopefully that battery connection is good enough. I'm going to have to tighten it. The sounds. You ready? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Something's pressuring up or charging up. I think it's the ABS unit. Yeah, it's the ABS unit. Okay. Yeah, I guess try it again. condensation coming out now but no like blue smoke or anything like that it's even idling decently eh check coolant level check fluid level for the coolant yeah and then fire monitor yeah just coolant just the coolant okay Well, first time in five years, let's run it. It's not bad, it didn't, didn't start at first, but then when it started, this actually sounds pretty decent. A little ticking there or something, eh? Check the coolant level. Oh, uh, you got a flashlight handy? Yeah. Uh, well, it's good news and bad news. It's green coolant. I don't think it's supposed to be green for this car. <laughs> Um, so we can put some more, well for now I guess we'll put some water in there to, it's green so we could just top it up with a little bit of water I guess. But I, I don't believe this is supposed to have green coolant in it. <sighs> uh, 
doesn't say on the cap. We'll have to look it up, but we could top it up just to get rid of the warning right now with water just so we can monitor the level. Yeah. I'll go get us a little bit of water. All right, so we topped up the antifreeze uh, in the car, and now the next uh, the next plan is going to be to start it back up again. We just wanted to make sure we didn't actually have no coolant in there. We're going to start it back up, let it warm up for a bit, and then uh, then we can drop the oil and do an oil change. Uh, and after that, we just got to quickly bleed the brakes, and then we should be able to take it for a spin, right, Matt? probably have a little bit of oil leaking from the top of the engine because we're getting some smoke on the exhaust on both sides here. So we might want to look at the, uh, the valve cover gaskets later too. Eh? We can probably pull off the plastic covers later and get get a peek at that. And get a little, a little juicy down there. Yeah, a little bit. A little raise a little bit on the manifolds there, yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to, we'll probably have to address that. This one might be easier to see in here. And it's really hard to tell. You can see the manifold at the bottom there under the spark plugs. It doesn't really look greasy though. Oh. But I mean, it's been, it's been sitting for a while, so. Yeah. All right, well, we're gonna let it run for a few minutes here and warm up. Well guys, can't begin to tell you how, what a relief today's episode was for us. Uh, we put a lot of faith uh, in this car, hoping the engine was good, throwing a bunch of parts into it while we were waiting for a key because there was nothing else we could do. Um, so yeah, a lot of sleepless nights worrying about this and I'm so glad to see it fire up. Uh, our next steps are going to be changing the uh, changing the oil in this old girl and then we're going to also flush the brake system because it's been sitting for five years now in a storage unit and the brake fluid looks a little dark so we're going to flush that out. Um, then we'll get the tires on it and uh, we'll be able to take it for its first drive. So stick around for the next episode where this thing's Gonna get some fluid changes and it'll be hopefully driving down the road for a short chest drive. We still don't have the title for it. We're waiting for that. Um, our local agency is not the quickest when it comes to that kind of paperwork stuff. So fingers crossed it doesn't take forever, but um, we're unfortunately stuck waiting for that. So we can just take it for a short drive down our road and back. But hey, it's better than nothing. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, if you like, Please consider subscribing and have a great day.